President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. on Thursday, May 26, sits down with three select reporters in a so-called press conference less than a day after his proclamation. The reporters are from the Apollo Kiboloy-owned SMNI, the Iglesia Ni Cristo-controlled Net25, and GMA News. The owners of SMNI and Net25 endorsed his 2022 presidential run. Other reporters and newsrooms only became aware of the press conference when it was announced on Marcos's official Facebook page. Incoming Executive Secretary Vic Rodriguez says the limited press conference was a result of a request by the three media outlets to have their respective one-on-one -on -one interviews as soon as Marcos won, and that this is not the policy of the incoming Marcos administration to exclude the media. During the campaign season, the Marcos camp consistently kept reporters in the dark about his schedule, refused to answer questions, and ignored all presidential debates. Meantime, Marcos acknowledges the role of a free press in society in a solidarity message to Cagayan de Oro's oldest and premier media group on the occasion of Cagayan de Oro Press Freedom Week. In a video message, the president-elect tells the Cagayan de Oro journalists to continue truth-telling and fair reporting. Saludo ako sa inyong kontribusyon sa ating bansa bilang mga mamahayag lalo na para sa ating mga kababayan dyan sa Mindanao. Ipagpatuloy po ninyo ang inyong mabubuting adikain na paghahatid ng katotohanan at patas na pagbabalita. Muli, maligayang pagdiriwang, mabuhay ang malaya, tapat, at responsabling pamamahayag. Marcos has had a tumultuous relationship with mainstream media as seen during the election campaign when his camp gave preferential treatment to vloggers and social media influencers. The Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court rejects government prosecutors' request to hold in contempt jailed opposition leader Laila de Lima and her lawyer. Branch 206 Judge Hener Guito dismisses the Department of Justice's petition against de Lima and her lawyer Filibon Takardon for lack of merit in an order dated May 2. DOJ prosecutors wanted to hold de Lima and Takardon in contempt telling the media that witnesses had gone on record to say they didn't have personal knowledge of the alleged drug payoff. Prosecutors argue this version of the testimonies is not true and had an obvious desire to attack or insult the dignity and independence of the court. Guito says the media statements in question are mere echoes of the testimonies of the witnesses. Since then, three people have retracted their testimonies against de Lima. Rafael Ragos, Ronnie Dayan, and Kerwin Espinosa say their earlier accusation that de Lima received drug money was not true. Incoming Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Boying Remulia said in earlier interviews, the retractions are a red flag and are worth reviewing. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Former President and Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo says on Thursday, May 26, the Philippines could succeed in its post-pandemic recovery if President-elect Ferdinand Marcos Jr. immediately implements his economic team's advice. Arroyo says in an interview after her oath-taking as Pampanga's 2nd District Representative, Marcos and Vice President-elect Sara Duterte have the best economists. Arroyo's remarks come a few hours after Marcos seemed to rebuff the Department of Finance's advice for him to defer tax cuts, impose new taxes, and slash exemptions of the value-added tax. The father of the vice president-elect, President Rodrigo Duterte, leaves behind 13 trillion pesos in debt. Arroyo is an economist who once earned praise for the country's high growth rates even as her government faced serious allegations of plunder and corruption. Starting May 30, Filipinos and foreigners entering the Philippines will not be required to have a negative COVID-19 test as long as they are fully vaccinated and have received at least one booster shot. 
Acting Deputy Presidential Spokesperson Chris Ablan explains the new guidelines on Friday, May 27 at the Malacanang press briefing. The COVID-19 protocols are on top of visa requirements and other entry requirements that typically apply to foreigners. Fully vaccinated and boosted Filipinos and foreigners arriving from abroad must present any acceptable proof of COVID-19 vaccination, and for foreigners, a valid passport valid for six months upon arrival as well. However, for Filipinos and foreigners who are fully vaccinated but have not received a booster shot, a negative RT-PCR test or a lab-administered antigen test result must be presented alongside their vaccination card. Meanwhile, unvaccinated and partially vaccinated Filipinos or persons whose vaccination status cannot be independently validated will be required to undergo facility-based quarantine upon arrival, aside from presenting a negative COVID test result. K-pop superstars BTS will head to the White House next week to address hate crimes targeting Asians with U.S. President Joe Biden. In a statement Thursday, May 26, the White House says Biden will host BTS on Tuesday, May 31. It says they will discuss Asian inclusion and representation and address anti-Asian hate crimes and discrimination. Attacks against people of Asian descent have escalated as some politicians and pundits have encouraged Americans to blame China for COVID-19 amid other tensions. The White House says Biden and BTS will also discuss the importance of diversity and inclusion and BTS's platform as youth ambassadors who spread a message of hope and positivity across the world. The group's management, Big Hit Music, says it is honored to be invited to the White House. <laughs> 